Alright, so I just finished my first year in chiropractic school at CMCC and safe to say that I've passed all my courses. Yes, there are 13 courses in this first year and with my memory still being very fresh, I want to share with you guys a summary of all the courses I've taken in first year and hopefully to brace you all newcomers with a warm up before the challenge begins. Also, congratulations to those who received an offer recently. I'm very excited for you guys and hopefully I look forward to seeing you guys on campus. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Calvin. I'm a first year and to be a second year chiropractic student at Toronto, Canada. And today I want to share with you guys a summary of all my courses that I've taken in my first year. We're going to talk about the course outline, marks breakdown, and also the difficulty level from each course from my personal experience. It is going to be a long list of courses and I'll try my best to make everything concise and digestible for you guys. And with that all said, let's get into it. First up, let's start with an overview. There are 14 courses in the first year with an accumulated teaching time of 547 hours and depending on the courses, some will have a practical component. Let's start with human histology. Now, this is a course, basically, it will teach you how to look at microscopic images of different cells and molecules in the body. It has 48 lecture hours with 28 lab hours and it's recommended that you also do it independent learning for 14 hours. And if you look at the marks breakdown right here, you can see definitely it is quite exam centric. It has an 88% based on the two written exams in module one and module two. And for difficulty level, personally, I would say it's a four, especially even for science students like myself, you're just not quite used to looking at these microscopic images. But if you do have really good pattern recognition skills and pictorial memory, this course should be very easy for you. All right, so on to second course, we have human biomechanics. Now, this course, I would say, is one of my favorite course in first year because first, biomechanics is the backbone of manual therapy, and secondly, lecture is just great. I've never seen someone who's done a greater job than Dr. Simon Wang here uh, in explaining research. Shout out to you, Dr. Wang. So, uh, uh, but for more of the content, this module is essentially a collection of research findings that are taken from original research that related to human biomechanics and with a strong clinical focus. If you look at it, it has 85 uh, lecture hours. There's no lab for this one. And if you look at the marks breakdown, uh, if you compare uh, around a 65% to 35% from examination to assignment, so still quite exam-centric, but definitely less than a histology. For difficulty, I'll put this a three stars because I want to say that the material in this course actually requires some depth of knowledge, but because of the great explanation from Dr. Wang, the professor of this course, it just makes it very easy uh, for us to digest the concepts. And uh, personally speaking, uh, he made it very enjoyable and very digestible. So the content is hard, but the delivery is very good. So it's a free for me. All right, next we have the technique class. Now this class is the main class for manual therapy. So palpations, manipulation, mobilization, and soft tissue therapy. In the first year, they cover techniques mostly in the thoracic and lumbar region. It is a face-to-face -face, uh, sort of practical. So we usually meet four hours per week from the start of module one to uh, the end of module four. So tons and tons of practice time. And here at CMCC, we're giving the privilege to use their full sensing technology technique, which I believe is probably the most valuable component in the technique class. The full sensing table technology is essentially a chiropractic table that was designed to have force plates and a record system. And in that way, you can know exactly how much force you put in in your adjustment and that will make it very powerful and quantifiable for you to track your learning. All right, so for this course, there are 102 technique lab practical hours with four simulation lab hours. Now the simulation is for you to use the force sensing table technique. And if you look at the marks breakdown, it is mostly examination based. Essentially, as an exam where they essentially assess your technique from a very practical point of view. Uh, the way how you do it is, let's say, oh, they, let's say they require you to perform this certain technique on the on the thoracic region, and then you basically have to walk through your approach. Okay, so we're doing flexion of the thoracic spine, and the contact that I'll be using are interspinous leg spaces. The point of contact, your line of drive, and they will assess how well you perform this 
so-called high velocity and low amplitude thrust. I'll say it, I'll say the difficulty for the technique course is a is a free because it is definitely something you can practice and with the many hours offered by this course um, you can definitely improve a lot and this course in general have two that are very friendly and uh, definitely is a course that will set you up for success. All right, so next up we have anatomy and the way how CMCC structure their anatomy courses in first year is by regions. So that essentially two different modules for anatomy, one for lower limb and the trunk anatomy, another one is the upper limb and the head and neck. So first of all, disclaimer here because I actually did have these two courses transfer because I already did anatomy in my undergraduate and my master's degree so I thought I don't really need that extra exam pressure. But I did sit through all the lecture material so therefore I thought I can give a fair review on this course. For the low limb and trunk anatomy, it is it has a 42 lecture hours with 42 lab hours. Now usually for anatomy, the lab hours is a cadaveric lab, but because this year with COVID, we actually did have a small duration in the beginning of the year uh, that allows us to actually get into uh, the cadaveric lab. But soon after, when COVID got worse, the school started to terminate this program because uh, the cadaveric lab essentially requires a lot of different people and resources to maintain. And with the limited people around that, it's just not very efficient for them to open up the kind of fact that with, with the many students uh, attending. If you look at the lower limb module, the assessment is essentially all examinations and also for the upper limb, if you look at it, it has a relatively less lecture hours than lower limb, 37 lecture hours with 50 lab hours. So the way how they did the labs right now was to transition everything to online but personally, I didn't find it very useful because they're essentially showing you anatomy diagrams, which you would have already seen in lectures. The way I, I wish they did it was to live stream people dissecting the cadavers, but I guess with a lot of different regulations on the Human Tissue Act, I'm not very sure if this is possible. All right, so the marks breakdown for the admin module, you see they're actually adding two assignments the two clinical cases for upper limb and head and neck and for the rest of the majority of marks it's around 80% for the written exam. I'll put these two courses with a difficulty of 5 because anatomy is anatomy. It is hard because there's first there's just too much knowledge in anatomy and secondly anatomy is just something you have to remember with a high degree of precision and accuracy so that's why I think it deserves a 5 right here. Alright, so on to the next course, we have uh, the clinical aspects of chiropractic practice. Now, this is a very interesting course because it teaches you the process of clinical investigation and ultimately forming a diagnosis. Definitely very fun because it almost feels like you're the Sherlock Holmes trying to take out some clues and red flags into forming a rationale behind different diseases. And uh, some of the important components in this module would include teaching you how to take a history, how to form differential diagnosis, and looking up guidelines for management algorithms, etc. So in general, the course has 22 uh, small group hours, in which this year it is delivered in the form of Zoom calls, and some more hours dedicated to some simulated experience learning and uh, observation hours. All right, so if you look at the marks breakdown right here, it's mostly assignment based. And when you look at those assignments, some of them are labeled with 0%, which means that most assignments are of a pass fail grade. And essentially, uh, they will still score you, but you have to reach a certain uh, threshold. I believe it's the 60% mark, and then you, you, you'll pass the course. And uh, one, one thing I can definitely share with you here is if you look at the examination bit, which we call it the OSCE, which stands for Obstructive Structure Clinical Examination. Now, this is very interesting because I finished this a couple days ago. It is essentially a practical assignment, which is broken down into different stations with each stations featuring a clinical skill and or patient cases. And the, the assessment is designed to mimic a real life situation where you will be given a certain clinical scenario and the assessor will basically evaluate how you perform in that situation. 
So the OSCE examination, it might sound very daunting at first, but after experiencing last week, I actually find that quite fun because instead of viewing that as an examination, I sort of see that as a learning experience and also a litmus test on uh, making sure how much you actually absorb from the year. And it not only tests your theoretical knowledge, but also the interpersonal skills and communication skills that are required in real life scenarios. An interesting thing is that they will throw you something like what, what they like to call a wrinkle and it's essentially something unexpected scenarios uh, that you have to deal with and it's very fun but very unexpected but you know this is real life all right next we have the diagnosis class so as primary care physicians we do need to know some of the basic diagnostic procedures to rule out and screens for systemic diseases and this course is all about teaching you the technical side of this procedure less of it to be the theoretical side, but they do test you on it. And personally, I don't think they're very in depth on the theory part on all these diagnostic procedures. And you would probably need some extra reading on that. And if you're interested in some of the resources, uh, check out here where I post seven online resources that has helped me into uh, improving my learning in chiropractic school. So the course has 10 lecture hours plus 14 lab hours and the recommended uh, independent learning is around seven hours so if you look at the marks breakdown right here uh, I think it's around so 15% assignment and 85% uh, uh, examination most of them are lab tests which essentially you're placed into a certain scenario and then you have to pair up with the right diagnostic procedure uh, to make a diagnosis difficulty I say for the practical part right is a two because it's essentially just remembering different steps However, for the theory part, I'll say it's a five because first, it's mostly me medical stuff and I don't think the course did a really good job on conveying the expectations on what to know for uh, in the written exams and therefore I ended up just spending lots of unnecessary time on extra reading which may or may not come up and that's why I think it is hard for me. All right, on to next, we have orthopedics class. Now to orthopedics, this is a very, very useful course, pretty much constructing the backbone of evidence-based care in the chiropractic field because these courses teach you about evidence-based concepts such as orthopedic testing, the pathophysiology, epidemiology, etiology of all the MSK conditions. If you look at the course outline has 33 lecture hours and 15 lab hours. Then if you look at the marks breakdown, it's around 20% assignment and 80% goes over in exams. So it's definitely a more exam-centric course. I would say the difficulty is a three because the course material is straightforward uh, with fair testing, personally speaking. And the procedure for all these orthopedic testing are well described from different tutors. And I generally have so much fun in doing those because being able to master different orthopedic testing and knowing when to use them teaches you a very systematic approach to rule in and rule out conditions. All right, on to next we have uh, the Applied Research and Biometrics course. Now, this is a course about teaching you how to critically appraise research. And as someone who comes from a research background, I'll say this course definitely includes most of the important concepts and uh, the structural approach onto how you can identify the strengths and weaknesses of research. It has a 10 hours lecture time, uh, 14 hours online lecture, and two hours team-based learning. Team-based learning essentially means that uh, you'll be presented with a prompt, then you and your group will come up with a uh, sort of response for that, uh, possibly, a, possibly a case study or research critique, etc. If you look at the marks breakdown, it is 50% assignments, 50% examination. So if you can see, it's definitely depend on continuous assessment. So continuous learning is key for this course. So I'll say the difficulty is a two because the material again is quite straightforward. And secondly, most of you guys probably come from a science background and these research concepts sort of babble around uh, your undergraduate learning and this course is a great way to consolidate it, your learning. All right, on to next we have biochemistry. Another disclaimer here because I have this course transferred again because I already done that so many times in AP chemistry in my undergraduate degree and I just don't want to go through it. This is essentially what you expect. Metabolism, crap cycles, organic chemistry, all those good stuff. You know, you know that. So it consists of 64 lecture hours, uh, 14 hours team-based learning. Again, uh, you present to the prompt with a group and then you come up with a response. So discussion-based learning. 
and 9 laboratory hours. And if you look at the marks breakdown, it's around so 36 assignments and 64 examinations. So more of an examination centric kind of course. So the difficulty, I actually asked a couple of my friends to let me know how they think about this course. So they, and they say the, the course has a difficulty of around three to four. It really depends on how much background you have. Uh, but in general, biochemistry is just, I'd say the most boring subject out of all courses. All right, so next we have uh, the foundation of chiropractic principles and practice. Now, this is another very interesting course because this course is not the usual science class. It covers a very wide range of topics from the history and the philosophy of chiropractic to leadership, cultural competency, uh, and entrepreneurship in the healthcare field. Now, this course is a discussion-based learning, meaning that there really doesn't have any lectures, only live Zoom session usually delivered with an activity in each class. For the breakdown here, you see it has a 10 lecture hours and then a 24 small group learning hours, which is the discussion based. So for, for the marks breakdown, definitely a assignment based learning. Most of them are just essays writing, not so much on written exams. Most, most of them are essentially basically asking you to reflect on a certain topic. And I would say difficulty is a two because this course is really giving you the opportunity to reflect on the profession and also building an understanding on different professional competencies. I remember an interesting example would be on a class of cultural competency. Uh, we're given a case study uh, which we require to build a clinic in Chinatown and to sort of think about what sort of accommodations we need to implement to make our clinical environment culturally inclusive. All right, how are we doing? The last four. Next, we have radiology. The radiology is essentially teaching you how to read an x-ray. Very useful indeed because being able to read radiograph adds an extra dimension onto forming a more accurate diagnosis and it is a course that consists of 34 lecture hours with 25 lab hours time. And if you look at the breakdown, mostly it is assignment based. Basically most of them will, uh, are quizzes and then there are several bigger assignments that will ask you to write radiological report which essentially is what normal radiologist is doing from a day-to-day -day life perspective and examinations are just basically MCQ examination. So difficulty for this course, I would say it's a five. Radiology is a very tricky subject, personally speaking, because it requires literally tons of experience for you to perfect the skill. And although the course teaches you a very systematic way to read these radi radiograph, but with limited experience like myself in first year, it feels almost like a hit or miss kind of thing. And basically you either see it or no. For me, it, feel, it feels like that. And that's just me personally uh, saying, but hopefully with more practice, uh, we can all improve in those pattern recognition skills. All right, final two, we have the fundamentals of radiography. Now different than radiology, because this is a course that teaches you the technical side of taking x-rays. It is about how x-ray work, the physics of it, and uh, what sort of film size you should use when you uh, take a radiograph in different regions and uh, knowing more about the legal standards of the safety measures uh, on the use of radiology. It has 15 lecture hours with three lab hours and two independent directed learning. If you look at the breakdown, it is definitely a assignment centric course with only 40% of it dedicated to examination. I'll say the difficulty of this course is a one because again, it's very straightforward. The concepts are there. It's just a merely a course of memorization. All right, so finally we have the rehabilitation course. This course teaches you the fundamentals of rehabilitation concepts and essentially how to coach a patient to do some exercises. It has 12 lecture hours, two lab hours, and if you look at the breakdown here, it's mostly assignments with only 25% at exam. And I'll say the difficulty for this course is a one because most of you probably have some background already in exercise physiology and most of the concepts are just a review for you and they're very logical and in general uh, with fair testing. So there we have it, I hope you guys enjoy this breakdown right here. Although I'll definitely say grad school is mostly about the volume of knowledge with similar depth of knowledge compared to your undergraduate degree and if you learn anything from this please give a thumbs up and let me know in the comments to see if this breakdown has scared you or has put you at ease. And with that all said, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.